looking at the number of wet, rocky planets or moons in, in say, the Milky Way is probably in the order of 20, 30, 40 billion of them. What, what fraction of them would you expect to have a non-eukaryotic life? Uh, I mean, I'll, go, I'll, I'll take a punt here. I would expect that if you've got these same kind of conditions on a wet, rocky planet, you're going to be producing these same kind of vents because it's the same chemistry that's going to happen. You're going to be dealing oh, so with so hydrogen. Even the vents are not contingent. In your no, the, the, the vents are produced by a mineral called olivine, which again is really common in interstellar dust. And the mantle of the Earth is made of this mineral called olivine. Ah. Uh, and it will react with water. And when it reacts with water, um, it's, it's, it's slow. If you were to put a lump of olivine in a bucket of water, yeah. you're not, you'll not see very much. But if you're dealing with the pressures down at the bottom of the ocean and warmer temperatures and so on, you're producing you know, bucket loads of, of, of hydrogen gas in alkaline fluids. So that's what these hydrothermal vents are. Yeah. So any wet, rocky planet will produce these vents. We, we, there's evidence for them on Mars from the early days of Mars when there were oceans on Mars. There's evidence now on moons, wet, uh, the icy moons, Enceladus and, and, and Europa. So you, uh, you know, this is going on in our own solar system right now. Right. So if there's 20, 30 billion yeah. Earth-like planets, which have the, presumably some big fraction of them have these vents, if uh, they all have these rock formations. So like, is there a view that a notable fraction of them have life that also operates. I mean, my view would be yes. Any but, but wet, rocky planet would have a decent. Yes, okay. and if you're starting with CO2 and hydrogen, what I'm saying is the metabolism is fav thermodynamically favored chemistry. This same chemistry yeah. will just go on happening because if you react hydrogen with CO2 and then with another CO2 right. molecule, the parts of the molecules that are going to react are quite predictable. So, sorry, this is a naive question, but what is the reason to think that there's no alternative chemistries which lead to alternative metabolisms? Um, perhaps under very different conditions, you could end up with a. But if you've got essentially similar conditions, you're. And, and the other, the other thing is, we know that even with very different chemistries, you end up with basically a similar subset of molecules. So from ah. from, on the, the kind of organics you see on meteorites, utterly different chemistry going on. You're dealing with helium radicals, to, to, but you're still seeing amino acids and you're still seeing oh. nu nuclear bases and so on. So there's a tendency, there's a kind of, th these are molecules which are basically stable and tend to be formed under a wide range of conditions. So 20 billion Earth-like planets with water and these rocks in- Not in necessarily Earth-like, but wet and rocky. If you just had to pull a number out of nowhere and just say, this fraction have nucleotides, what fraction would you say? I would say a substantial fraction. Like over 1%? Yes, I, I mean, I, really? I, 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 I would imagine fifty percent or something. Really? I, I, I mean, I, I'm pulling. You say pull a number out of a hat. I'm doing wait, exactly wait, what so you're you saying. I'm there's... pulling a number out of a hat. I think this kind of chemistry is going to give you the same nucleotides uh, repeatedly. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.